Okay. The next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 15261 in the name of Ian Gray on new global goals. Leave no one behind. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons as soon as possible. I now call on Ian Gray to open the debate. Mr Gray, you have seven minutes or thereby. Please. Uh, thank you, President Officer. President Officer, I was uh, asked to lodge this motion today by one of my constituents, uh, Heather Cameron, uh, who is one of the leading Action 2015 ambassadors. Uh, Heather Cameron comes from Dunbar Grammar School, and throughout last year, in her ambassadorial role, campaigned tirelessly to promote a commitment to and understanding of Scotland's role in meeting the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals adopted by the UN at the 70th regular session of the General Assembly in New York last September. These goals committing members to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And I welcome uh, Heather and her classmates uh, to Parliament this afternoon. Uh, Heather was one of uh, 15 15 year old ambassadors uh, who helped in the UK's launch of Action 2015 uh, in London, meeting with politicians including Ed Miliband uh, and Nick Clegg, uh, but also delivering a petition uh, to the Prime Minister at 10 Downing Street in a campaign launch which mirrored similar launches of Action 2015 uh, by young people all over the world. Uh, Heather then organised a Light the Way march in East Lothian with fellow Dunbar Grammar School pupils and local community leaders that took place on the eve of the UN summit meeting discussing the development goals as part of a final call for commitment from politicians uh, 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 to support the goals. And then Heather met with Kezia Dugdale towards the end of last year to ask for Parliament to consider a motion such as we do uh, this afternoon. Now, President Officer, I've always been proud of the United Kingdom's significant contribution to global aid and supporting those around the world who need our support the most. Britain is a significant contributor and last year became the first country in the G7 to honour its commitment to ring fence 0.7% of gross national income for foreign aid. Through successive UK government support for the Millennium Development Goals, the predecessor goals from the UN, uh, we know that we have today 17,000 fewer children uh, sorry, uh, every year, 17,000 fewer children dying uh, for reasons of poverty, and that nine out of 10 children in developing countries now attend primary school, uh, a, 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 a significant uh, improvement uh, in education uh, globally. But it is still unacceptable that over one billion people still live on $1.25 a day or less. And you know, presiding officer, this is not just about uh, government. In fact, in some ways, it's not about government uh, at all. Uh, many years ago, I, I worked as a teacher uh, in Mozambique, and for 12 years, too, uh, I worked for Oxfam. And in those jobs, I have seen the impact of poverty through war, drought, famine, dictatorship, and even genocide in countries as far apart as Cambodia, Chile, Rwanda, and Zimbabwe. And the thing that I learned was this, that no matter how difficult the circumstances, even in situations where I confess I would have given up long before, you will always find people who will work together in order to find a way through to improve lives for themselves, their families, their communities, and their countries. And it is they who will deliver the Sustainable Development Goals. Our obligation is to support them, to support them individually, in government, and indeed in international bodies like the UN. That is the importance of the UK aid budget and indeed the Scottish Government Development Programme in countries like Malawi. But, presiding officer, this problem is neither small nor is it far away. Sustainable goal one is to end poverty in all its forms everywhere. And I know that Heather herself is passionate about explaining to people that that means ending poverty here too. After all, one in five children in Scotland live in poverty. Tens of thousands of our fellow citizens depend on food banks. 
and around a third of our households are fuel poor. Now, when I worked all those years ago in Mozambique in a rural school, young people from all over that country came to school and lived in the most basic of conditions in spite of war and famine. And why? Because they believed that education was their route out of poverty. And that is a theme that runs through these sustainable development goals. And it is as true here in Scotland as it is anywhere in the world. And the most shameful of the statistics that we know of Scotland about poverty is that it is still the case that your success at school will depend more on how much your parents earn than any other factor, your talent, how hard you work or which school you go to. And that is why across this chamber we agree that that attainment gap in our schools must be closed because that is the greatest single step we can take to ending poverty and delivering these sustainable development goals here in Scotland. Presiding officer, in closing, I, I want to draw attention to another theme which runs through the sustainable development goals. And that is summed up in the goal which calls for urgent action to combat climate change. Around the world, uh, we see the impact of climate change, be that in drought, or indeed in flood. We even see it in changing uh, weather patterns here, which has its own impact in agriculture around our own country. And I think it is appropriate to draw attention to this because it was, of course, a previous pupil from long ago in Dunbar's schools, one John Muir, who was the very first to recognise and understand that to end the impoverishing of humanity, it is necessary also to end the impoverishing of nature. Presiding officer, I think John Muir would approve of the sustainable development goals. I am sure that he would be proud of Heather and her classmates from his hometown of Dunbar. I certainly am. Many thanks. I now call on Kenneth Gibson to be followed by Kezia Dugdale. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And first, I'd like to thank Ian Gray for lodging this motion and securing the this debate, which will undoubtedly help to raise wo more awareness of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Of course, exchanges in this chamber often revolve around details of very specific policy issues, and it makes a welcome change to take a step back and look at the much bigger picture elsewhere. So I'm pleased to speak in a debate that takes us back to what has motivated many of us in this parliament to become involved in politics, even in a small way, to make the world a better place. When the United Nations set its eight millennium goals uh, 16 years ago, it directed its efforts to eradicating extreme poverty, or at least by 2015, significantly reducing it across the world. The millennium development goals rightly focused on matters such as education, maternal health, reducing child mortality, and uh, improving debt sustainability as separate goals alongside eradicating extreme poverty. I believe this more holistic approach has contributed massively to its relative success. And I say relative because, as Ian Gray has pointed out, despite the enormous progress that has been made, there is, of course, still a long way to go. And, of course, as we know, civil war and anarchy in countries at the moment, such as Libya, Syria and Yemen, make it increasingly uh, difficult for these countries to sustain the development progress they had already made, and indeed they are slipping backwards. So to truly empower the, uh, uh, people's lives uh, it takes much more than simply keeping them alive. Uh, the key to sustainable improvement is peace and development. Uh, outcomes described in the Millennium Development Goals Report 2015 that struck with me most is that the number of out-of-school children of primary uh, school age worldwide has nearly halved during the programme from 100 million in 2000 to an estimated 57 million last year. This was achieved at the same time as a significant decline in the number of people living in extreme poverty from 1.9 billion in 1990 to 836 million in 2015. But as Ian Gray has pointed out, almost a billion people in extreme poverty is still horrific in this day and age. People uh, desperately trying to eke out a daily existence in a world which has more than enough to go around. Millennium Development Goals have, of course, now been succeeded by the all-encompassing 17 Sustainable uh, Development Goals. And I'm proud that the Scottish Government takes its role in this extremely seriously and is determined to be at the forefront 
of achieving these new goals. Last July, Scotland received praise for being one of the first countries in the world to sign up to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And these tie in with Scotland's own sustainable development programmes, which were already in place, such as the National Performance Framework and Scotland's Nat National Action Plan on Human Rights. This has allowed Scotland to hit the ground running when it comes to implementing, measuring and reporting progress. And of course, much of the, 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 the support that Scotland provides for developing countries is in Malawi, a country which uh, many people have a strong emotional attachment to in Scotland, given our historical connections with that country. Delivery of objectives and outcomes set out in the National Performance Framework it, it, um, is one of the key priorities in the Scottish Government's proposed uh, budget for next year. And when it comes to the budget for Europe and external affairs, it also contains a commitment to continue working across ministerial portfolios to support international aims, including on water management, climate justice, the UN Sustainable Energy for All initiative and the new UN Sustainable Development Goals. But it's important, as Ian Gray has already done so, to acknowledge that uh, the, the poverty is not just uh, beyond our shores, but we do have a, a poverty, not to the same degree, but certainly consistently within Scotland. And that's why I'm pleased that the Sustainable Development Goals apply to all countries, including Scotland, whereas the Millennium Development Goals were strictly focused on development countries. Because we have inequality and poverty, and I know addressing this uh, remains a priority for the Scottish Government. There is much more work, of course, to be done in meeting sustainable development goals internationally and here in Scotland, presiding officer, but I'm hopeful that governments, organisations and individuals such as uh, Heather Cameron will continue to work towards these goals so that in 2030 we can look back on an even more successful campaign than the Millennium Development Goals achieved. Many thanks. <coughs> now call on Kezia Dugdale to be followed by Mary Scanlon. Thank you, President Officer, and congratulate uh, Ian Gray on securing this debate and also welcome Dunbar Grammar to the Chamber. They are most welcome. And also thank Save the Children for providing a briefing for this debate. Um, I'm here today because, bluntly, President Officer, Heather Cameron asked me to. And she's such a persuasive young individual that I'm defying what is, in a way, a parliamentary convention that leaders of parties come and participate in, in members' debates. And it's a pleasure to do so. I wanted to share with you how I met Heather Cameron, presiding officer. When I first became leader of the Labour Party in Scotland, we organised a competition called My Scotland. We wrote to every S5 and S6 pupil in Scotland and invited them to take part in an essay competition to share their vision for the future of Scotland, whether that be 10, 15 or 20 years. And Heather, Heather Cameron made the final of that competition by writing an essay about how important the Sustainable Millennium Goals were, uh, not just to Scotland, but indeed to other countries uh, around the world. It was that passion and that dedication which brought her to our attention. The 10 finalists of that competition all came together one day and were um, put through a number of different training exercises. They were exposed to some first-class leading journalists here in Scotland, including Lindsay McIntyre, from the Times and Patrick Maguire from Thomson Solicitors, who helped each one of the finalists develop their ideas, develop their campaigning abilities to come up with new ways to communicate what they believe in and what they stand for. And Heather's talents shone through on that particular occasion. I wanted to uh, commend Heather for the work that she's done, not just to highlight the work of Action 2015 and to do everything that she's done around leading marches through Dunbar, but never giving up on making the case on a day-to-day -day basis as to why this is so important. If I could refer you, presiding officer, to the UN Sustainable Development Goals in detail, there are 17 in total, and I'm not going to go through them all, but three in particular stand out for me to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls, and to promote sustained, inclusive, sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment, and decent work for all. Now, I know that many of us in the Chamber stand for all of these things. And I was reflecting in preparation for today's debate, presiding officer, about my own views on gender equality and how important that is to my own politics. And I've stood many a time in this Chamber and talked about the need to progress gender equality, because if we don't do that, we will lock women and girls out of the jobs of the future and lock them into low-paid, low-skilled work. And that's very important that we tackle that here in Scotland, but it has to be set against the context that Ian Gray outlined in his opening remarks about the circumstances that women and girls find themselves in in so many countries around the world, where they are still fighting for the right to go to school. That is what is so important about the work that Heather Cameron is doing and that all of the ambassadors involved in Action 2015 are taking part in on a daily basis. So on that note, presiding officer, it's a pleasure to participate in this debate and I wish Heather and all her colleagues the very best with the campaign ahead. Thank you.
Thanks so much. I now call on Mary Scanlon, after which I move the closing speech from the Minister. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I would like to thank Ian Gray for what I thought was an absolutely excellent speech. And uh, I would probably like to thank Heather Cameron for securing this debate. Um, but I had my own debate on Millennium Development Goals 4 and 5 on International Midwives Day in 2009, which called for more to be done to tackle infant mortality and poor maternal health, both in Scotland and overseas. And uh, I also spoke, uh, looking back, on the issue of Millennium Development Goals in members' business by Labour's Des McNulty back in 2005. But as Ian Gray said, the Millennium Development Goals are proving that when the international community works together, we can tackle some of the world's uh, most pressing problems. And I would just like to put on the record that my party would fully agree that education is, without any shadow of doubt, the route out of poverty. Uh, I, I just want to acknowledge uh, at Westminster the government has taken a leading role on the post-2015 framework, working alongside other UN member states, securing international agreement on these ambitious and compelling sustainable development goals centred on eradicating poverty. Uh, the United Kingdom was the second largest OECD donor of overseas development aid in 2014, spending 11.7 billion, which was an increase of 2.6 on the previous year. Uh, in fact, uh, the, in the foreign aid programme even drew praise from the SNP at Westminster. Uh, Mary Black was apparently on a visit to Kenya last week. And uh, her quote is, Britain is one of the better countries in terms of commitment to foreign aid. Having seen the difference it makes to people's lives, I think it's highly important we maintain this level of support. Uh, but the UK has enshrined, as Ian Gray said, the 0.7% commitment to overseas development aid in law when the International Development Bill received royal assent in March last year. Uh, Ian Gray has deservedly uh, congratulated the work of Heather Cameron and uh, I've no doubt that she would, wouldn't have been as successful if it wasn't for the support of Dunbar Grammar School. But as an MSP for the Highlands and Islands, I would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate the pupils of Forest Academy in Murray, whose Human Rights Day petition I signed last week and amongst other things they are campaigning for the right to education of the 57 million children worldwide who have no access to education. When I looked back at Millennium Development Goal 5, which is to uh, support pregnant women through birth and reduce infant mortality, uh, more than a million children uh, are left without mothers due to maternal death, and 20 million women experience potentially fatal complications during childbirth. In 2005, in Eastern Africa, only 34% of births were attended by skilled health attendment, attendants. Millennium Goal 5 set the target to reduce maternal mortality by 75% and to achieve universal access to reproductive health by 2015. The conclusion is that progress has been made, but it has been too slow to achieve all the goals. But nonetheless, I think we should uh, acknowledge the progress. Um, uh, and fewer children under five are dying from preventable causes. But given that around 800 women die from pregnancy or childbirth-related complications around the world every day, we also need to be aware of the campaign to end fistula. And I'm sorry Richard Simpson isn't in the chamber because he's hugely supportive of this issue. Fistula is a rupture in the birth canal that occurs during prolonged obstructed labour and it leaves women incontinent, isolated, socially excluded and ashamed. For every woman who dies of maternity-related causes, it is estimated that at least 20 women experience a maternal morbidity, one of the most severe forms of which is obstetric fistula. 
A nine out of ten fistulas can be successfully repaired, so this is also an issue that needs to be addressed. In my final uh, minute, presiding officer, I would like to mark other uh, two points of progress. And one is the global measles immunisation coverage, which is now 84% among children between 12 and 23 months. I think that has to be acknowledged. And also a country such as Afghanistan, uh, the under five mortality rate has dropped from 257 deaths for every thousand live births to 97, and that's between 2002 and 2012. So whilst I mark the progress, I thank Ian Gray for securing this debate and appreciate more needs to be done. Many thanks. <clears throat> I now call Minister Humza Yousaf, uh, Minister, seven minutes or thereby. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. My thanks uh, to Ian Gray for bringing this uh, motion to the Parliament. My thanks to Dunbar Grammar for Heather Cameron, who I look forward to uh, meeting, hopefully, uh, if I can, after this debate. Uh, I haven't met her, obviously, already, and she seems like a force of nature uh, by what everybody has already said and by her emails, uh, which I've read in my inbox. In fact, one sent just yesterday uh, with some additional briefing. Uh, and I, I absolutely uh, agree with what Ian Gray and uh, Kezia said, uh, that it's incredible to see our young people taking these initiatives uh, forward. Uh, it, it gives you great hope for the future, because you can often be downcast at the scale of the challenge. Uh, but when you have young people like Heather, and there's many uh, more across the constituencies and forests and up and down Scotland, uh, as people have already said, that are taking forward these initiatives, not being defeated by the scales of the challenges, giving hope uh, where often there isn't much hope uh, at all. And it's with that that actually drives us, because if Heather hadn't, uh, hadn't approached Kezia, hadn't approached Ian, then who knows whether we'd be discussing the sustainable development goals uh, and the global goals uh, at all. So credit absolutely where credit uh, is due. Who, know, who knows, uh, she may be a future politician in the making. And that was meant as a compliment, by the way, not as an insult, <laughs> as some might perceive it. Uh, it's a pleasure to be talking about the uh, sustainable development goals. I was struck by what Kenny Gibson said at the very uh, opening uh, sentences of uh, his remarks, where he said that uh, this is why most of us got into politics in some way, shape or form. And he's absolutely right. I think if, if, if all of us cast our mind back to when that seed was planted in our head about entering frontline politics, whether it was as a councillor, as an MP, as an MSP, uh, whatever position it was, uh, we would have gone back home and talked to our partners about it, our friends about it, our family about it. We would have reflected on it internally, uh, of course, but ultimately we, I'm sure all of us that are here would have chosen to do it because we wanted to make the world a better place, whether it was here in Scotland or whether uh, it was the world uh, at large. And that's a good reminder that actually we can get lost in uh, the debates and the robust debates that we have in this parliament, often over things that are, of course, uh, very important, but uh, not quite actually on the same scale as the global challenges, uh, the global goals uh, face to take, uh, look to, to take on. Uh, the point has been made, uh, presenting officer, by everybody around this uh, chamber, but it's worth re-emphasizing and reiterating the global goals are unique, uh, not just in the, 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 the goals uh, themselves inherently, but by the fact that they apply uh, to all countries across the world. Uh, different to the Millennium Development Goals, uh, their predecessors that just apply to uh, the developing world, this applies to the uh, countries across the world. I think that's exceptionally important because of uh, the fact that we have poverty uh, and, and we have inequality in Scotland that we must challenge. And therefore, from the Scottish Government, I was delighted that in the summer of 2015, uh, the First Minister, uh, one of the first leaders uh, across Europe, actually, to commit herself uh, in writing in, a, in, a, in an article that she wrote for the Sunday Herald, uh, that we would be uh, most definitely incorporating the sustainable development goals within our national uh, e economic strategies and uh, so on and so forth. And there's work to be done on that. How do we do that? We're already working uh, in regards to our national performance framework to see how we can incorporate uh, that within our own uh, legislation uh, and our own practices here in government. I also uh, want to just touch upon a, a couple of the goals. Uh, I also won't go through uh, all, all 17 of them, uh, but there are goals that we are helping uh, already to assist with and to take on and to challenge through the Scottish Government's International Development Fund. I would, uh, as Mary Scanlon said, uh, I wouldn't have been surprised. I, she seemed to be surprised when Mary Black uh, was praiseworthy of the UK government's efforts. I, I, I don't think I've, any, I've been anything other than effusive in my praise uh, of the work that DFID has done. Yes, I have some differences in terms of uh, often how it's, uh, how it's carried out, but they're incidental, really, 
uh, in the grand picture. I think the UK has a good record, and successive UK governments have had a, a good record when it comes to their commitments on international development. We should support them absolutely we can. We should also be very proud of uh, the NGOs, uh, the schools, the public agencies uh, that do international development work, regardless of how small that may seem uh, in scale, uh, but the impact is undoubtedly uh, huge. We should be very, very proud uh, of that. Uh, in terms of the work that we're doing in, in Scotland, we have a £9 million international development fund spread over uh, seven countries, Malawi being probably the primary relationship because of those people-to-people -people links uh, that exist. But we do work alongside uh, uh, in terms of tackling a number of the goals uh, that, uh, uh, that, are, that are there. Uh, goal number five, people have already spoken about, achieving gender equality, I think is hugely important. Uh, I think it's important because all of us recognise that um, you know, we get more bang for our development buck uh, if we're helping to tackle and reduce the inequality gap between men uh, and women. We know that uh, if you educate a, a man, you educate uh, a single individual, you educate a woman, uh, the chances are you educate an entire family, an entire nation. Uh, as a result of that. So there's a lot of work to be done uh, on uh, reducing gender uh, inequality and we're committed through our International Development Fund to do that. Uh, Ian Gray touched upon climate energy uh, and climate justice and climate change. Uh, goals number 7 and 13 particularly pertinent to those. And I would just like to reiterate that from a Scottish Government perspective we're very committed uh, to ensuring that we tackle uh, climate change uh, and take on uh, the issue of climate justice. I was in Malawi, I've been to Malawi a couple of times uh, and have been struck by what a difference um, renewable energy and sustainable energy can make to people's everyday lives. Whether it was the women or the, 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 the project I, I, I viewed where uh, they were providing uh, micro hydroelectric from the Malangi Mountains uh, right down to villages uh, in that area whereby a woman was the first in her village to give birth in a room that had a light uh, in it. Incredible. And that was in 20. Uh, 14 that visit, uh, 2013 that uh, visit, uh, or, or more recently when I, when I visited uh, villages in Malawi where uh, instead of having a paraffin or kerosene lamp, uh, people had this uh, you know, sustainable uh, solar panel lit uh, energy efficient light bulb, uh, which meant that the children could study for longer, there wasn't smoke inhalation. I was struck by how small things can actually make a, a huge, huge uh, impact. And lastly, I want to end on, presiding officer, uh, just going back to uh, well, the two points. But going back to Heather Cameron and the pupils at Dunbar, is that it's so important that we teach our young people about the challenges that the world faces. Uh, I think any country can lose itself from being too insular. Scotland's not immune to that. Uh, so we have to ensure that we teach our young people about the challenges that exist out in the world. Uh, we can do that through the Curriculum for Excellence, which has global citizenship as one of the modules. And I've seen the development education centres in action teaching our teachers on how, that, uh, on how you can make an impact uh, through that module. Uh, but we have to, because I too often pick up uh, some newspapers, I too often read blog posts, I too often look at Twitter uh, posts, uh, Facebook posts that tell me that why and ask me why are we giving money to uh, other countries across the world that are suffering when we have challenges here. And we have to communicate to our young people why it's important that we continue to tackle uh, some of these issues. And the very last point I want to make is one that I thought was very, very well made by an excellent contribution by Ian, Cray, Ian Gray. Uh, when he spoke about his own experiences and he made the point uh, that uh, we should never lose hope. I think that is a really important uh, point. I, uh, and like many other members here, uh, watch the news uh, in a constant news cycle and it would be easy with all the challenges the world faces to commit ourselves into a downward spiral. Uh, but uh, Ian Gray is absolutely correct uh, that so long as we have uh, good people and there's more good people that outweigh the bad people, as long as we have people there like Heather, like many others, who are willing to always, always stand up against injustice, stand up for humanity and for compassion, then actually we don't need to be in a downward spiral. There will always be hope and there will always be goodness. And I thought that was a great point and very well made and probably, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, a good point to end on. So my thanks again to Ian Gray for bringing this motion, but my thanks especially to Heather Cameron and Dunbar Grammar and all the good people across Scotland and beyond doing work to help promote the global goals, uh, whatever they may be. Thank you. <coughs> Many thanks. I thank you all for taking part in this important debate and I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2 o'clock.